Here's why I left the coolest job in the world. Stay tuned. Hello, hello there, and welcome back to another episode with Panda Raff and Mr. Tango here. Yeah, today we're talking about uh, a topic that's actually uh, very personal to me. Um, I know I put it in my book and everything like that, but that even that was a very vulnerable moment for me. Like this isn't something that normally comes up in my day. Uh, it doesn't come up in normal conversation. Um, but this is why I left the massage school. Um, this was this was my dream job. I absolutely loved working as an instructor at a massage school. That was, I mean, even with the really long hours and some of the annoyances that came along with trying to corral, you know, 30 to 60 people into learning something, like, I loved it. I I worked so hard at it. I, I put in 60 hour weeks and on top of that, I was doing extra training to make sure I was a good instructor. It was just, it was great. And it, it's something that I fit really well into. Uh, at least I felt, and I, I felt like I'd really proven myself uh, at, while I was at the school, and man, it, the thing, the things that happened there that pushed me to quit, it's going to be rough. So here's a bit of a trigger warning for uh, anybody out there that might need it. Um, you know, the story, it's not the worst, you know, it, I, like I think it really sucks as it happened to me, but um, it's really not that bad, I guess. No, it's kind of screwed up. So let's go ahead and get into it, though. So I was an instructor at the massage school, and I was dating somebody who also worked there. She wasn't an instructor. She worked in, um, what do they call that department? Uh, basically, she inputted grades and made, inputted attendance and stuff like that, and she would talk to you if you weren't showing up to class. So we kept it pretty chill for the most part, uh, even though we were living together, no one really could guess it. I mean, the students really couldn't. Um, the staff knew, obviously. But when we broke up, it became a very obvious thing that there was tension between us. And, you know, it sucks because when somebody's hurt, they can make ugly decisions. It's just a reflection of where they're at in that moment. It's not necessarily saying that they're a bad person. And because of that, I, I put up with her harassment for some time. I mean, months. There, there, there was a good long period where I put up with her, I, I mean, harassing me in front of people, in front of staff members, in front of students, um, you know, ma making fun of, uh, you know, you know, making fun of like my private areas and stuff like that. And, you know, ba basically she said and did things to me that if I had done to her, I definitely would have lost my job immediately, like with without question. I may have even had some kind of lawful order against me, right? Because it, it, it got pretty wild. It, it really did. And I really didn't want it to get to me because, again, she was hurt. There, You know, we, we had a good thing between us and then it ended. And you can understand when somebody is not okay with that. But I really didn't like what she what she was doing. Um, I, I even kind of tried to change my habits, you know, like I walked through the building in different ways, so I didn't have to like cross paths with her as much. And uh, you know, e even this though, like this only created the perfect storm because you have to think: here's a person who is going to express her frust frustration through harassment. There are staff members who are turning a blind eye to this, like. I, I, I could turn to the room and be like, is anybody else seeing what's happening right now? And they would all just look away or walk away, right? Like, they're, they're not going to get involved. And again, I can't blame them. Like, there's these two kids that are dating and then they broke up and now there's drama and they want to bring me into it, right? Like, I don't necessarily blame those people. Um, although I kind of do. I kind of do. Like, I kind of thought somebody would have stuck up for me in that time. Um, and then there's me who's just kind of like, hoping that it'll stop. So this perfect storm is just culminating in her growing ever more confident in what she's doing, right? Like no one's going to stop her, not, not even me, right? Until one day, I'm talking to a student who needs support. So what can happen in massage is you can have something called an SER. 
a somatic emotional response. Soma, somatic, this is the word that refers to the body. So a body emotional response. It's almost like it's almost like you have emotion stored in parts of your body, right? And when we when we work on that part of the body, we can release this emotion. And or or it can trigger a memory, right? Uh, well for this guy, man, for this was a young guy too. He was he was really young. I don't even think he was in his twenties yet. Um this guy came to me because his wife had passed away and because of the massage, because of the body work he received, like he was, he was seeing visions of her, right? He was seeing like flashes of her. And I think the exact word to use is every time I close my eyes, I can see her face, which is already just, it's so devastating. Like if, if, if you've been following in the videos and kind of following along with my life, I know I haven't been very open about it in the videos, but uh, I have gone through a divorce and and you know losing my wife in that sense that was terrible man <laughs> but I know she's happy you know like I, I know she's she's alive and she's thriving and she's doing so well and I'm so proud of her and I just oh man I think the world of her I, I can't imagine though having completely lost her right and so my heart is just totally breaking for this guy um but then my ex she comes up and she's like she's taking any chance she can to like really jab me right so uh even as i'm talking to this student who's clearly having a hard time she come up and she says some comment about my private area and that i deserve everything that's happening to me but he thinks that she's talking to him right that he deserves this to be happening to him and I remember the look on his face man I remember the look of like shock because he oh man he was such a sweet guy like like I think I'm like a fairly nice person right but he he makes me look like a bully he's just he was such a good guy and to see him wronged like that it, it woke something up inside of me a lot of the times we talk about anger as a bad thing and I think prolonged anger can, can really wear at you, right? Or, or anger that doesn't have a point to it, that doesn't have a you know, specific target. Um, and even then, I mean, even like prolonged anger just in general, I, I, I think can, can wear on you. But anger in short bursts can, can push you into really wonderful parts of your life. Jen Roseman, my favorite acupuncturist, and I consider her a big sister. She's She's amazing, and I love her so much. When we were talking about anger, uh, it was it's, it's it's kind of a sign that you are now in the mode to reestablish boundaries, right? Like if, if someone's really like changed your relationship or pushed you in a certain way or made you question what you were doing, like this anger is you wanting to reestablish who you are with them, and. I think in short bursts, this this is a really positive thing. Sticking up for yourself, right? This is a good thing. Um, so I went to I went to my manager. I went to her manager. I went to our manager's manager, and they all had the same answer for me, which was expected. I mean, something like this is kind of a tricky situation. It's kind of a he sh he said she said type of situation, and I understood that going in. What I the problem I had, though, was it was so obvious, right? Like, I, so they, they, all, they all said that they had talked to her and that she said that they didn't know, she didn't know what they were talking about, right? So there was nothing they could do. Um, so I, I got my, my TAs to basically all testify for me, saying like, no, we've seen her behave this way. Like, and keep in mind, at this point, I've asked my other instructors to stick up, to, st to stand up and say something about this because it is becoming a problem and they still won't. I want to say it right now that the instructors I worked with, I respected you so much. You were my heroes. You were absolutely my heroes. And after everything was said and done, I thought you all sucked. I did not like pretty much any of you. Alicia, I love you. I'm always going to love you. I think you're wonderful. And Chris, you weren't you weren't teaching at this point, and I don't think you saw a lot of what had happened. But 
all the rest of you, it, I thought we were a team. I really did. And it really showed me that this whole like, oh, we're a family and we're going to stick up. No, no, no. This is a workplace and that's it. It, it, it. And it was frustrating because I, like, I looked at these people like, like they were larger than life, right? Like this whole like don't meet your heroes type of thing. Like, man, I, I really didn't buy into it because the team that was set up, I just thought that was the dream team. Like I wanted to be these people. But like when push came to shove, it wasn't until after everything was said and done that they were like, oh, oh, yeah, we, we had your back. We didn't like her that whole time, you know, like seriously, forget you people. I'm I'm so much better off without you all in my lives, really. I'm I'm and, and and it's not like there weren't red flags before all this, right? Like the team clearly showed in plenty of ways that I wasn't a part of it, that I was just kind of holding a place until the next person really filled that spot. So, my TAs come in, they you know, give their give their side of the story and everything like that. And um, I, I even have to come back in and re-give my side of the story of everything. And then the director of the school calls me in to his office and he you know sits me down and he says, I need you to be quiet. I'm going to make a phone call. And he puts it on speaker. So he's calling the HR department, like the, the head HR department of the entire company. And he lets you know, what's going on, that one employee is harassing another employee. You know, she's saying things about his private areas and just indulging in all this weird behavior, right? And her response was that women can't sexually harass men. Really, women can't harass men in any aspect, right? That basically I was just exaggerating all this. I was making all, all of it up and I was doing it for attention. So... They weren't going to pursue anything. They weren't going to, um, you know, bring any kind of disciplinary action. And, you know, I was young and naive at the time. I, I, I really thought that the HR department was there to support you and help you. And they're not. They're there to protect the company. That's what they're there for. They're, they're not there to help you. Okay. They're there to protect the company. So in that moment, and, and this might be something you want to take note of, because I find that when, whenever I see, whenever I was working for other spas or clinics and an employee quit and they did the whole like, oh, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. Right? Like it just comes off as so petty. And I didn't, I didn't even think to say this. Like I didn't, I didn't like plan it. I didn't practice it. I feel like the words found me in the moment. And I was sitting there and I said, I'm, I'm no longer comfortable representing myself. I'm going to find representation. And it, and it did it did stick. As I was walking out of the room, the director was like, "No, no, 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 no. Like, wait. I'll have this I'll have this figured out by tomorrow. Don't call anybody. Just go home, come back into work. Everything will be everything will be fine, right?" And when I came into work the next day, uh, there was an email saying that she had quit. And obviously she didn't quit. Obviously, right? That was a lie. They had fired her, and I didn't want her to be fired. I re- I just wanted her to stop. I had, I had talked to her. I tried to take every step that I could to make sure that it, it didn't happen, and she was fired. And it it's it sucks because without a job, like things get ugly really really fast, and that was not my intention. I might I just didn't want to be with her romantically anymore because. The because is not important, and we, we can't talk about it in this video. But it was after that that, you know, we had, like, the staff coming up to me and, oh, you know, I, yeah, I didn't, I, I never liked her, you know, like, I never thought you were a good couple anyways, and um, it, good riddance, you know, good riddance that she's gone. And, you know, these are all people that I had asked to stick up for me weeks, months before this, that now are saying that, oh, yeah, yeah, now I'm on your side. You know, I had your back the whole time. Like, baloney. And 
and it was like a bunch of small problems had caught up to that point, right? It was a bunch of like, like I had always taken a bigger class load. I taught 75 sessions every 10 weeks. Even if the other instructors requested that they do less than 50, you know, or 40 or whatever, I always did 75. So I was there a lot. I was tired. When everybody else had to get bumped up to 75, there was a lot of complaining and whining and wanting to push that work off to me again. And it became obvious that most of the instructors that I worked with were petulant children. And it sucked. It, it, and why it frustrated me so much was because I was looking for that guidance. I, I knew at the time that I was hadn't reached my full maturity, right? And so I'm looking to these other instructors for how do they behave? How do they hold themselves? How do they get themselves out of these tight places? And what it came down to a lot of the time was whining and changing the rules on the spot. So another reason I left the school, like that, that re- reason in and of itself with the ex-girlfriend and how it was handled was already enough for me to quit. I, I hated that place after that event. I hated everybody that worked there. I, 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 was, I was so discouraged and so fed up that that alone pushed me away. But now let's keep in mind that there, that there are other reasons. I, again, like the amazing people that I got to work with would change their grades all the time. Like, if you were a massage student who went to our school and you wondered why, like, you started off with a huge class that dropped and then just plateaued at a certain number, and it was the same number throughout any class that reached that number, like, I think it was 15 or it was like 13 students that it could get down to. If you got below this number, you had to actually drop the entire class, you had to drop everybody in it. So if you got down to this number, they would just pass everybody because it was easier that way. So there was already this huge drop in standards because the instructors couldn't, couldn't handle themselves. And honestly, if there was any time that we had to learn a new skill or push, push ourselves in a new way or adapt in some way, there was always this blah, 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 this, this conversation about, well, we've always done it this way. We, we, this, is, this is how the old education manager did it. I loved the old education manager, but the way these people worshipped her, it was so stagnating. They, they could not see beyond her shortcomings, and they were in completely, completely unable to use any kind of problem-solving skills to further where they were at. Like, they reached a status quo at one point, and they were good with that. They were sticking with that, and there was nothing that you could say to change that. And ultimately what happened was because there was no change in these terrible standards for so long that when we really needed to get busy, when it was time that, yeah, we, the school might close down because y'all aren't trying hard enough. Then there had to be this big rapid change, right? Then new management came in. So the director who, 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 who fired the ex-girlfriend, he, you know, he left at one point. And the education manager who told me she couldn't do anything about it, she also left at one point. And they brought in a different director, a different education manager, a different team of sales representatives. And the culture completely changed immediately, right? Now, I don't typically like when people walk in and don't understand the culture and they just try to change it. But again, at the same time, we asked for that. We continually had poor standards. We continually underperformed. And I, there, there really wasn't any other option. Unfortunately, they brought in a total shark, right? A total business shark that came in, had no understanding of body worker education. And because of it, the school closed down, what, like, not even a year after I left. I mean, maybe a little more after a year, but it was very short after I had left that that the cracks started to show a lot more. And what's terrible is I, I can already, like, even without having talked to the other instructors that were there at the time, I could already see them pointing the finger and blaming others, right? Blaming the students, blaming the management and but but everybody had done that i mean even the management 
uh, uh, when, when I was there, would, would sit down with us and ask us why we think our students aren't showing up to class. And if you said something like, well, I know the student isn't showing up because uh, he doesn't have reliable transportation. It was the very thought that we thought he had poor transportation that made him have poor transportation. Like I was manifesting his 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 circumstances with, with, with my thoughts because he told me why he couldn't be in class. Yeah, it's a little esoteric. Um, but again, that was that that was the culture there was, you know, finger pointing and making it up. And, you know, it was always OK when when that one person did it. But then when everyone else did it, then we all got squeaky wheels. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting all riled up here uh, again. This was my dream job. This is what I loved to do. I love to teach. Loved it. I loved being there with students and changing lives and getting those those light bulbs to go off and those aha moments. And, you know, some people are on some serious quests and I got to help out with it. I thought it was amazing. You know, uh, I think we're going to have to do a part two here because I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know, I don't, wanna, I don't really want to be on camera anymore. So uh, I think we're going to do a part two for some of the other reasons why I left the school because uh, we're not even remotely near wrapping all of those up. Uh, but I should also do another video about why I loved my job, why I loved teaching. Uh, so we'll probably do that. Stay tuned for that. Uh, I know today was kind of a negative video, so I appreciate you hanging around. I really intended for this to be more positive. Um, but sometimes, you know, anger can be a good thing. Uh, I'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Uh, go ahead and check out our website, book a massage with us, grab my book because it's awesome and we talk about all sorts of cool stuff in there just like we talked about today. And hey, I will see you in the next video. But of course, always, always remember to be safe and stay safe. Be awesome. And stay awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next time.